This video is going to show you how to find domain and range on a graph using a highlighter as a strategy. So let's just review exactly what domain and range means. So the domain of a function is the set of all possible values for the input variable. If you're having trouble remembering what domain is related to as far as the x, the input, or the y, the output values, I like to remember dmx, so the famous wrapper and the domain is related to all possible values of x. And for range, I like to think of young and the restless, like the soap opera, or young and reckless. And that just helps me remember that the range is all of the y values. Okay, so let's take a look at this graph. And I'm going to show you actually using my pen here, how I'm going to find the domain and range, and we're going to start with range first. So let's first take a look at where our graph starts, and you can see it's here at negative 5, and it's going to go all the way up here. So start at negative 5, go up, can it be negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4? It can, can it be 5? No, it can't. Okay, so I know that it's going to be all y values, or all output values between negative 5 and 4. So when we put it up here for domain, we can say, can it be five, four, no, how about three? Yes, can it be two, one, zero, and negative one, it can't, it can't be negative two. So if we look back on the graph and you have a highlighter available, um, here's what I want you to do. Let's first look at the range because that's what we did first um, in the previous section. So I want you to highlight the y values where your graph starts. So I can see here that my graph starts at negative 5. And then I'm going to follow it all the way up and I can see that my graph will end, as far as the range goes, on this coordinate right here. Now I always get a lot of students that say there's not a dot there, so how do we know? Is it going to be um, an open interval or a closed interval or an open circle or a closed circle? And the answer is if they don't show you that it's an open circle, you can assume that it's closed. So uh, I know that my graph starts at negative 5, and let's start with the interval notation here. So I see that it's an open circle, so therefore it's going to be a, a parenthesis. So I'm going to put negative 5, and it goes all the way up to positive 4. And again, I'm going to assume that that's closed, so it will be a bracket. For the compound inequality, I can say, I'm going to put my y in the middle and I'm going to start down again at the bottom because remember we read from left to right. It's the smallest value to the largest value when we write this. So I'm going to say that y has to be greater than negative 5 and then it has to be less than or equal to positive 4. Now let's go to the domain. So I'm going to do the same thing. Again, I'm going to look and this time though I'm looking at my x values. So I'm going to highlight that. And I can see that it starts on negative 1 here, and it ends on positive 3. So for my interval notation, I'm, and I see that it's a closed circle again, so I'm going to say that it starts on negative 1 and goes all the way up to positive 3, but it's an open circle, so I'm going to use a parenthesis. For my compound inequality, start by writing your x in the middle, and we know that it is greater than, x is greater than or equal to negative 1, but has to be less than 3. Let's try another one. Okay, again, I'm going to start with the range on this one. I'm going to use my highlighter to see where is the y values where my graph starts. So that just kind of helps give me a visual. And I can see that for my interval notation that my graph is going to start on negative 3. Again, I'm going to assume there's a coordinate here because I don't see an open circle. So it's going to start at negative 3 and it's going to go all the way up to positive 5. And that also is a closed circle so I'm going to put a bracket. Then I'm going to put my y in the middle and I'm going to say that y has to be greater than or equal to negative 3 but less than or equal to 5. Notice that if I were to use a different color here and look at negative 4, my graph is not touching negative 4. So that's how I know that that is not a possible value for the range. Okay, looking at domain, now I'm looking at my x values again. 
I am going, I see that my graph starts at negative two and it's gonna go all the way over to positive five as well. So I can, I'm looking at these numbers here, negative two and five, and I have a closed circle on negative two, so I'm gonna have a bracket. It's gonna start at negative two and go all the way to positive five with another bracket. For my inequality, I'm gonna start by putting my x in the middle and say that x has to be greater than or equal to negative two, but less than or equal to positive five. Hopefully that gives you a strategy on how to figure out domain and range and you found this video helpful.